Hello and welcome to episode 176 of my podcast all about knitting and crochet and my yarn shop here in Wiesbaden, Germany. I'm Kiko and today is March 6th, 2023. Today I'm wearing something that I made myself and something that was knit by somebody else. So I'll start with the loop um, scarf that I'm wearing um, that's knit out of Nuro yarn and it's the yarn is called um, Kureopatra which is the Japanese way of saying Cleopatra <laughs> and this was just one skein I think it's a hundred gram skein um, with this long I think it's it has like two color repeats which aren't exactly the same and um, the pattern that I knit is um, I think this is supposed to be the the front side and this is the back but it's kind of interesting on both sides so I thought it's a nice pattern um, to use for a scarf or a loop and uh, the pattern is out of this book and I think last week I was wearing this jacket and now you can see what I meant it's supposed to be a, a smaller short sleeve jacket and mine just turned out to be huge and long and wide <laughs> It's so completely different and I had thought that this um, magazine that all the patterns were for the same yarn but I was wrong there so they use different um, yarns for the projects in the magazine. I crocheted this uh, vest once but mine was about as small for me as this one is for her so I gave it to a friend who's a bit um, she's not smaller but she's she wears a smaller size let's put it that way and this is the the pattern that I used for my loop scarf so you can see this is one of the sides this is the other side and I think she used a different yarn or she used fewer stitches I don't know but hers is a bit narrower and longer but I'm quite happy with the way that mine came out and I knitted during one weekend in 2015 while we were on a sort of choir retreat and um, in between rehearsals sometimes maybe even during the, re the rehearsals I knit uh, this loop scarf um, so it's knit to and fro and I sewed the beginning and the end together here so this is the seam it's not very big it's mostly the the color change and I think from this side it's almost invisible I'm really happy with this and the pullover I'm wearing, that was knit by one of my colleagues I used to work with at Vollerödel, which was a yarn shop where we had to knit the um, everything that was in the window display. We were told which color, which yarn and which pattern to use. The only thing that we could choose was which size to knit. So I would very often knit um, the window shop samples in my size so I could keep the things sometimes I gave them away sometimes I would sell them and this colleague um, I think she never ever kept anything for herself I think she hardly ever wore um, knitted pullovers or, or cardigans or anything um, so usually she would try to sell the things that she knit but with this pullover she nobody bought it so I was in the shop for a long time and um, at first I had thought about knitting it because it's very thick it's a it's one strand of very big yarn and then two strands of mohair and I really liked the fabric but I thought well it's rather green I'm not so much into green I prefer blue or turquoise colors but after looking at it for such a long time and I knew nobody was buying it I said to my colleague you know what I'm going to buy the pullover off you because I really like it it's huge and big and it's oversized but it's so warm and I sort of got used to the color looking at it all the time and then she said you know what you can just have it and she gave it to me as a present which I thought was really nice so this is what it looks like now I think it was even bigger to start with and I think having gone through the wash a few times it's a little bit smaller now but you can see it's fairly long it's really wide I have to roll um, the sleeves <laughs> because they're really huge but I don't mind doing that and depending on how cold it is I can uh, roll them down to keep my hands warm and if I want to do something I can just roll them up and be busy and the only thing that I knit 
on this pullover, I just remembered. Uh, when I got it, the neckline was so wide, it would slip off my shoulder. So the first couple of years I had the pullover, I hardly ever wore it. And then at some point I sat down and I undid the um, ribbing that she had put in and used the yarn to knit another ribbing, but with a lot of fewer stitches. So I was holding the edges in and now I think it's perfect. At first I was worried I wouldn't get my head through, but my head um, fits through nicely. <laughs> and um, But now it doesn't slide off my shoulders. It's, it's a lot um, nicer to wear. And I'm really happy with the pullover. Yeah, two strands of mohair, one strand of really thick yarn <laughs> makes for a, a really nice warm pullover. So, so much for what I'm wearing, then on to finished objects. This week I have one finished object and one new cast on. So, keeping it even. At some point I will have to finish more than I cast on, but maybe someday, we'll see. <laughs> but the finished object that I can show you are the film reel socks for my older nephew. Um, he's really looking forward to receiving these and um, he tried on the first one, so I know they fit him. And um, yeah, I used Opal Sock Yarn Cats and Dogs series. So everybody in my sister's family is getting film reel socks with one color of Cats and Dogs uh, series. And, uh, and my brother-in-law said, this looks as if it was the film Dune with lots of desert and sand and, and things like that, sunshine. Yeah, so I'm really happy I finished these. I really put a lot of work into knitting these last week. So there are several projects that I'm not going to show today because I um, didn't get to knitting them. Um, because after I finished these, the sock madness kicked in and we'll get to that in a minute. Um, On to works in progress and I'll continue with socks. But before I show my sock madness socks, um, I can just one more. No. I can show you the fairground socks again. I'll show them again next week, hopefully as a finished object, but we'll see about that. Um, I did continue knitting on the second sock and there aren't that many pattern repeats to do before I can knit the toe. So I'm fairly confident I should be able to finish it this finish these socks this week. The pattern is available now. I knit them um, as a test knit. It's a very nice pattern, very easy to follow. Um, if you are into shorty socks and like just a little detail, which makes counting the rows so much easier. So if you want to have two socks the same size, you don't have to sit down and count the rows or just hold them next to each other. But you can just count the little eyelets that you've made and it's really easy to um, get two socks the same size. Um, it has a fairly small toe, so make sure that you knit far enough before you start the toe. Um, and otherwise, I'm, I think these are going to be really nice socks and I'm pretty sure I'm going to knit them again, maybe with a different um, lace pattern, if they're for my sister, maybe even with the same pattern because she doesn't mind having the same pattern again. It's just that I get bored knitting the same pattern, so I might, and I'm, I'm knitting so many film reel socks. <laughs> <laughs> but they do keep me entertained because they switch between one color and two color and I'm using different colors for every pair so that's okay but with these I probably wouldn't mind knitting a different uh, lace pattern just to mix it up a little bit but the basic construction is really nice and um, yeah pretty sure I'm going to do that again and have I said that you can get the pattern now it's been published and there's a link on my Ravelry page so um, if you're into shorty socks go and get the pattern. So now on to sock madness. So last week I showed you the pair that I knit to qualify. So I qualified for the sock madness and I'm again on team W. Last year I was in team Wagner. Um, we had, uh, there were composers um, names last year. This year I'm in team Watermelon. So we're into fruit this year and I'm on team Watermelon and um, the first, the pattern for the first round came out um, or was sent to us on Saturday. I was just about to leave my shop to go home when I realized the pattern had dropped so I could have a look at it and pick a yarn. And I chose to use this 
fairly old Opal Abo yarn, subscription yarn. So um, this, I think this is a one of a kind colorway. I don't think they repeated it in a series later on. I might be wrong, but um, yeah, so I only have this one um, ball of yarn in that color and we were supposed to use a contrast color and I decided to use the dark red that I also used in my pullover and um, that's a really strong contrast. And then I started knitting the first sock and I, I'm going to show you the beginning of the second sock um, for you to see. So it's a cable pattern and you can see there are some decreases and increases and especially you can see that I'm not knitting in the round. So this is the second sock that's technically not, well this is definitely not knit in the round, but also the um, qualifier sock. Um, they looked as if they were knit in the round, but we had to knit back and forth most of the sock. And with this sock, we knit the whole leg and foot back and forth. And then the toe is knit in the round. So this is the um, toe that I knit in the round. There's an afterthought heel that I knit after I finished the toe. They're basically the same, there are a few differences. And then the whole sock gets seamed up. So there's this funny seam going up the sock and the increases and decreases that we do is so that the seam sort of goes from one side to the other after um, the stitches for the afterthought heel are being put on hold um, there are no more increases and decreases and then the seam goes sort of straight down the foot and I think it's a really funny sock and the most interesting fact about this sock is it fits me even though I knit the minimum requirement. So that's such a surprise. At first I was a bit worried it might be a bit tight with all the cables, but it's not. It's really nice and flexible. The heel is big enough and actually the sock is a tiny little bit too big for me, but I think I will still keep them and wear them. Maybe I'll wear them on top of um, either other socks or when I'm wearing um, tights and put the socks on top. Um, but I'm so surprised they, they almost fit me. <laughs> They're only a tiny bit too big. I'm really happy. And I think I like the way they look. Um, the sewing together of the sides was really easy because of she describes it very clearly how to do it. Oh, by the way, the pattern is called Valgus and uh, the designer is Jennifer Ruszynski. I think she's called J Rush on Ravelry. And um, the way she put up, made up the pattern uh, and describes it is really easy to sew together. And yeah, I'm working on my second one. I think on my team, 12 people are already finished with their socks and on to the next round. Um, the fastest 35 are going to um, go to the second round. So I still have a chance. Um, I will probably spend most of the rest of the day today <laughs> finishing the socks um, to make sure I get on to round two. That's all the ambition that I have. I don't want to, um, <laughs> uh, I do want to make the first round. That's what I'm trying to say. If I don't make it in the second round, it's okay. But uh, yeah, I'd rather not finish before the first round <laughs> or in the first round. I don't know how to say it anyway. So really like the colors. I like the construction. It's um, like the cables. Valgus by Jennifer Ruszynski, Sock Madness, round one. And that's all the socks I'm knitting at the moment. It's just those two pairs. Um, so both of them will probably be finished fairly quickly. I might just start the next film reel sock. I might start another vanilla sock. I might do something completely different. We'll see. You'll find out next week <laughs> what I did this week. So then... No gloves today, no mittens, no um, dinosaur skeleton, but I continue knitting on both my garments. Um, for the Noro jacket, I only knit a little bit on it. So I think all I did was add one more pattern repeat. So nothing much happened. This is the front and the back all in one, knitting with the um, silk garden solo. So not a lot happened, but at least a little, but the pullover, I finished the yoke. 
So it's the Hopi pullover and basically everything was supposed to be knit bottom up. Um, but I was so unsure of how long to knit the sleeves. I first knit the sleeves and then I started the yoke doing a provisional cast on and then I did all the color work um, that's in the book and then I started changing things. So, but I finished it, I finished the yoke. So last week I showed you all the color work up until here and then I told you I was going to do short rows and that's what I did. So there's nothing in between the two patterns here, but here there's already a bit of a gap. And then when I turn it round, you can see this is the highest part of the short rows. And the interesting thing was that I had a customer last week um, who wanted to learn um, to knit short rows. So that was fantastic. She'd already knit her piece up to the point where the short rows were supposed to be. So she knit her short rows and I knit my short rows and I just decided to do 10 stitches um, more every time I turned. So I have this much more height in the back than in the front. And once I finished the short rows, um, I put in the last bit of pattern that was in the pattern. And then uh, according to the book, I should have knit I think three rounds in this contrast color and then bind off and I would have had a little rolled edge which I didn't want to have so instead of doing those two uh, three rounds I started doing ribbing and um, last week I was still thinking about maybe doing a turtleneck but when I tried it on after finishing this last bit of pattern and this last bit of pattern also has the last decreases so that's sort of the um, number of stitches that I was supposed to finish on and I tried it on and it's it's not a bad fit but it was too far away from my neck to work as a as a turtleneck so I knit I think I did the same number of stitch uh, rows that I did on the um, cuff of the sleeves and when I knit to here I sort of end at the bottom of my neck so I thought that's a nice place to end and you can you can tell so this is fairly wide this is quite a bit away from my neck so <laughs> the ribbing just gets to my neck not higher I could have continued knitting and then uh, at the turtleneck but I didn't like the look of it so I decided to cast the stitches off here and I'll be wearing a scarf or a loop or something when I wear the pullover and after I cast off the stitches I sewed on the first sleeve so I was really looking forward to that. When I finished the yoke, I put it on, I put the sleeve on and I decided that the length was just about perfect. So they might be, I think they're rather too short than too long, but I don't really think they're too short. And I think after I wash the pullover, it'll relax a little more. It will probably be absolutely perfect and maybe a tiny little bit long, which in a warm pullover is a good thing. Um, yeah, so one sleeve is attached, the other isn't. Um, if I had knit the pullover without the um, short rows, I could have just sewn in one of the sleeves wherever I wanted and then just make sure the other sleeve gets to the other side. But with the short rows, I really had to count and um, be careful to really put the sleeve at the side so that the smallest bit is in the front and the highest bit is in the back. And I've already put aside the stitches for the second sleeve. So this is the needle that's holding the, um, the sleeve stitches. And this is the marker where the sleeve is going to end. So all I have to do is um, kitchener stitch the sleeve onto the yoke. And then I can put the stitches on a needle and I can knit the stitches that I put on hold on the sleeve. And then I'll just be knitting round and round and round and round. And um, so I don't have to cast on a vanilla sock because this is going to be my vanilla knitting. Oh, that's good. My mindless knitting is what I'm trying to say because there'll be no more color work, no more color changes. And I just have to knit until I think it has the perfect length. So really happy and excited with this pullover. So that's that. Then we come to the two shawls that I'm knitting by Stephen West. And the first one is the Pierre um, shawl that I am knitting out of hand-dyed yarn by Voldacke. Those two 
colors that are dyed on DK weight yarn. And I showed you the first color last week. And then I've added the second color. And the first bit of pattern is, um, this is the wrong side. This is the side I, sh <laughs> I should be showing you. So this is the front of the shawl. So it changes between, it's two rows of garter and two rows of stockinette stitch. And it's two rows, this color and two rows, that color. And I, it's really interesting because the dark color has light bits in it. There's only a few bits where there are actually two dark colors on top of each other. And in most bits, there's just one dark row and one light row. So that really mixes things up really nicely. And then add to that the few dark spots in the light color. And it's a really beautiful mix, I think. And after this section with the garter and the stockinette stitch, there's um, a seat stitch section. And during that section, we also switch between the two colors. So that's where I'm at at the moment. So I'm, I have to finish this section with the seat stitch and then the next section is going to be only white again. And then we'll see how it goes on. Really happy with that. So it feels really beautiful, um, very soft. Um, really happy with that. But I'm also very happy with the other shawl, the Fragmentations shawl that I'm knitting out of the Opal Beauty series in this color with the with the self-striping yarn um didn't get to knit a lot on this shawl unfortunately but i really have to as soon as the sock manor socks are finished i think i'll um try and finish the first segment of this shawl because now i have to make a decision how long to make the segments and at which point in the color repeat i'm going to stop so my plan is to finish with this color stripe so that then that I can start this next segment with this color so that instead of having this dark gray up here I'll have it down here and then all the colors will get um, set off I think is the word so um, right now I am knitting I've just started knitting this color this is the bit where I want to finish so I can start with this color so I'll add those two colors and then I have to make a decision whether this is wide enough big enough or I want to knit another repeat of um, a whole color repeat words <laughs> I hope you understand what I mean I hope by next week I will have finished the first um, segment and started the second I'm really really excited about starting the second segment and then attaching the two and then to get a feel for how the shawl might look uh, once it's done. Very exciting. So that's that, and that's almost everything <laughs> that I can show you today. Um, yeah, but what with the film reel socks uh, that needed a lot of work, and then the sock madness starting and so on. Um, but there's two more things I'm going to show you. I did not crochet on the elements um, crochet along, but I added two rounds onto my alpaca lace granny square with all the colors. So just a black round and the dark green round. Um, yeah, still love it. I couldn't go a week without crocheting at least a little bit on this. So looking forward to continuing this. And then um, I'm not running a, uh, a knit along at the moment because the Viva Vittoria was has ha happened, has already happened, happened last weekend. And uh, with the eye cords, I'm not really doing anything at the moment. I am thinking about what to do next, but I haven't had the right idea yet. So we'll do another knit along at some point. Um, but as I said, last weekend, the big happening happened in Darmstadt, uh, where the organization Viva Vittoria, um, they sewed together 2,221 blankets. So they used up 8,884 squares that were donated and they laid them out in a public place in Darmstadt on the Saturday and they started selling blankets. So you could buy a blanket when you donated at least 20 euros. So that was like the minimum price. You could give more. Um, and we decided, we had decided to go on Sunday and a friend of mine wrote to me Saturday evening 
that um, there were only so many blankets left. I forgot what she wrote, but it was less than a thousand. So from the more than 2000 blankets, there were less than a thousand left um, Saturday evening. So they went on selling Sunday morning. And when we got there at lunchtime, there were only, I think there were less than a hundred blankets left. So uh, we had a look around and I couldn't see any of my squares. I couldn't see any of the squares that the people from uh, my knit group and my customers and my friends, I couldn't see any of those squares. Um, but then the two um, or three people from my knit group who were there with me in Darmstadt, they decided to buy one of the blankets for my shop. So I could either put it somewhere or hang it somewhere and just show that I supported um, that happening and that I am one of the voices against violence against women. And so... <laughs> I got to pick out a blanket and this is the one that I chose. Um, I wanted to have, well, I'll, I think I'll get up and show it to you. I wanted something colorful. I thought that fits with my shop and with um, the things that I make. And so I went for this blanket. So this is the way the blankets look. They just took four of the squares that were donated and from what I heard, they have to use a certain red yarn that's sort of um, typical for, or, or that's part of the organization, Viva Victoria. And they also have their labels that shows that this is an official blanket from that organization. And it also states that it's from 2023 and that it happened in, I think it says Darmstadt. Yeah, it says Darmstadt. So, um, yeah, this is uh, my new blanket for my shop and um, I will have to think about where to put it. But it's a really nice reminder of that um, happening last weekend. And uh, yeah, I'm really happy that this is going to live in my shop now. Yeah, and that's everything that I knit and crochet during the last week. And um, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.